which will talk about communication for social change and transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome our session chair for the panel, Ms. Shreya Krishnan from NVT, to join me on screen, who will introduce you to our stellar panelists, as well as uh, steer this very interesting conversation, which is about communication for social change and transformation. If you have any questions, uh, then do send it to us in the chat and comment box. You can also join our online conversation using the hashtag IPRCCC2020, which is IPR triple C 2020. Do share your uh, key insights that you've taken away from these sessions. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, get ready for this invigorating session coming forward for you. While we bring our panelist and session chair on screen, tell us in the comment box which was which has been your favorite session of the day. Let's call it that. Yeah, which was the session that stirred uh, you know your thinking cap on, put got you to put your thinking cap on, got you to think about your strategies or rethink on those strategies, and uh, tell us which have been your favorite uh, highlights of the session so far. And as we all know, we will be. Uh, showcasing the award ceremony this evening the iprcca which is indian pr and corporate communication awards 2020 which were held in its physical format last evening keeping all safety precautions in mind we will be broadcasting it tonight for all of you for the wider audience here we hope for all of you to join us and celebrate the win of this industry so in this session, which is communication for social change and transformation, on our panel, we have Mr. Anurag Chauhan, Nandita Chibar, Wanch Nathani, Lakshmi Agarwal, and Renuka Dudeja. So if our panelists are here, can we please bring them on screen? So firstly, a very warm welcome to all of you. And, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. So apologies, I think Shreya is having a little bit of a trouble in joining in. So uh, until she joins in, uh, let me be the proxy here and ask uh, your one-two questions to all of you. So when we talk about this topic, communication for social change and transformation, what are the first key points that come to your head to anybody who's aspiring to get into this domain? So Anurag, if you'd like to start. Well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate E4M for organizing this, Karan, Dr. Batra, for organizing this beautiful event. Well, yes, there are a lot of things that are in my mind when we talk of communication. Well, uh, we were just talking a while ago with my friends and we were, we were discussing as to how communication and the tools have really helped us uh, during this lockdown. As an NGO, I, I, I run this organization called Humans for Humanity. And we were struggling to reach out to people in the remote areas. Now, all of us are privileged. We're talking on, on a laptop, we have a mobile, but in the rural areas where people do not have the tools of communication, it's very difficult to reach to them. But somehow, uh, thanks to our team, we were able to reach to all of them and we managed to, to organize workshops and we, were ma we managed to organize sessions for women, training them uh, about menstrual hygiene and we made sanitary napkins with these women. So it has played a very important role uh, for us as an NGO. Apart from that, there are lots of other people on the panel who would who would be able to tell us about their expertise, especially Renuka, who I know personally, Vansh, who is an educationist. And, uh, you know, Renuka also could tell us a little bit about the CSR. And then I could give my point as to why, why as an organization, I have a lot of complaints as an NGO from, from corporates or from corporate houses, I should say. Uh, not from you, Renuka. Don't don't take it personally. <laughs> sure, Anurag. <laughs> but well said. I think uh, bang on com uh, completely. Uh, welcome, Shreya. I can see you are online now. <laughs> hi, hi, guys. Hi, everybody. Sorry for the short delay, but here I am. Lovely. So, like Anurag, you asked, uh, you know, coming from uh, where I come from with a lot of corporate background and CSR, you mentioned for every corporate uh, being socially responsible is like a big agenda to drive, not only to attract customers, but genuinely do make a change and difference to the world around us. And, uh, you know, I always say this, if I look at, uh, you know, all um, 
human uh, sort of uh, um, skill sets, you know, one of the most important life skill set I feel that one must have uh, is communication. The ability to say what you want to say to the world out there and get and understand what they're saying. I, you know, I have two daughters and both of them study psychology. And one thing I hear them offer saying, uh, saying often is, um, you have to feel to heal. And, and I bring it to the point of the conversation where we are. Uh, for me, um, uh, social change is a big and huge healing process. It's a constant healing, constant change. And for that, um, communication, I think, plays a huge role to uh, evoke the feelings inside of people that they want to make a change. They want to make a difference. People like to be uh, you know, in gangs. You see bikers hanging out together. You see uh, people hang out with, uh, they say, birds of the flock, uh, feather flock together. It's like that. So communication hands, uh, you know, bond people into a flock. And um, for any social change, I think you need a flock and you need to enhance and you need to make it bigger and bigger and bigger. So I think uh, from where I come from, communication, I think, is the most important thing. So wonderful. So Shreya, I was playing your proxy, so I leave the bait into you to take the conversation forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy. Uh, as always, doing a phenomenal job. All right. So uh, I'm going to now, Renuka, thank you, take off from where you just left off. And I'm going to bring Wunsch in and get him to give us some sort of insight into what the role of communication play in a mass and a larger spectrum as an educationist. Wunsch, I'll ask you to weigh in here and give us a little bit of an insight into what that means for you and how it plays out. Absolutely. Thank you. Good evening to everyone. Um, I'm really happy to be here. So from an education perspective, I think we've also adapted very swiftly. And I think we had to do the most adapting in this lockdown. I know a lot of people would feel that way, but education was a place where everything was so physical that whether it's the teaching community or the students and the parents also, very important stakeholders, they were very detached from technology as such. And so very easy forms of communication. So what we had to do was innovate. Um, you know, to get onto platforms like Instagram to be able to engage our audience, which is you know, grade eight to twelve primarily, and to be able to, while they're sitting at home, come up with something that sells them this dream. So what we did initially was we came up with something called the Mindless Scholarship Fund, in which we told the students that while they're sitting in the comfort of your home, and it's been a difficult year not only for you but for your parents, especially financially, why don't you? build your profile through a few online courses, do a few things and apply for these free scholarships. It was equally difficult to communicate with the universities to get them to engage with the students and to offer those scholarships. But again, the gap was that the universities had no way of flying down to schools to engage with the students. So I think all of this really came well together. And the lockdown has been a great learning experience. I will, of course, talk about other things also, but I think Nandita is left. Yes. I'm going to ask Nandita to come in here and talk about once you left off at a point which was very poignant because it talks about gaps that often need addressing and how media and communications can play a role there. So Nandita, I'll ask you to welcome uh, your thoughts on this context. Hi, Shia. Hi, everyone. Um, social change and transformation is a slow process. It takes years, decades, centuries, sometimes you get gender equality, you know, it's such a slow process. But only once in a lifetime or once in many years, we have these watershed moments like a pandemic, you know, that can trigger social change, behavior change, transformation so quickly uh, that we are struggling you know, how to cope with it. Uh, the fact is that communication has now played a massive, massive role. Imagine when in a lockdown, it is the communicators, it is through communication tools, platforms and strategies through media that we were able to get these messages out. Something like a pandemic has triggered not just uh, social change, behavior change. It has also led to technology change, a trigger, you know, a technology trigger. It has also led to trigger in policy change uh, because uh, if you look at right now, the healthcare, uh, you know, budget is one thirty-seven percent up. Uh, it has reflected. It has, uh, you know, this pandemic has shown the gaps in health uh, and in hygiene and. Uh, 
uh, let me give you the example for the longest longest time uh, uh, you know uh, public health experts have been speaking that uh, hand washing is the most cost effective uh, you know public health intervention and it would be like okay, you're teaching the 20 second hand washing in schools and you know with the communities and the pandemic hits and everybody there are videos on tiktok and you know there are videos everywhere everybody is teaching and and then suddenly you realize the gaps in infrastructure you don't have stations you know you know and what about water so uh, i would think that this pandemic is uh, you know i would take it as a silver lining in the crisis and it is a huge opportunity for media and communication especially communicators to basically take you know you know go full throttle and and you know go forward with their advocacy and awareness in, in a plethora of subjects yeah right um, Anurag, I'll bring you back in here uh, to sort of talk about now the gaps from the other side. Uh, what do you think are the lacunae and what do you think are those areas that need focus in terms of building capable, robust communication processes when it comes to the side of social impact and uh, socially uh, you know, impacting organizations that are not essentially built for profit, hence their structures don't really uh, plan in such a manner. But what has the last year taught you in this context? Well, Shreya, you know, uh, what has happened as Nandita, Renuka were just talking about how people have this power today of the social media. See, uh, that there is a difficulty in people uh, to, to communicate in front of others. Maybe they, they're not very comfortable talking publicly. But today, having platforms such as Facebook, TikTok, or any other social media, Instagram for that matter, people have that power to communicate and reach out to each other, telling whatever they want to. And they have done that. But we have also seen that how it has affected the community or affected the, the generations or the generation that we live in. I mean, you see TikTok. It was drastic. I mean, the way I used to see the, the TikTok videos, of course, there was there was some good content on TikTok as well. But at the same time, the kind of content on TikTok, I mean, it was it was absurd. On the other end, there were a lot of people at the same time who were, who were making good use of it. They were people who were making good use of Instagram, Facebook, and all the other platforms. Now, giving one of our examples, what we did was uh, during this lockdown, when a lot of people were facing issues in, in earning money, there was a community we worked with called the Katputli community in Delhi. This community is one of the oldest and one of the biggest street artist community in, in, the, in, the, in the world. And this community, as it is, did not have any any scope of earning money because they, they are they are coming from a background where no one wants to watch a Katputli performance anymore. Now, how we transformed that entire thing into a project was called the Katputli project. And we went to schools. We went to schools and said that your online classes are going on at this point of time, which which might become mundane and boring for students to attend at the same time. You know, it is it is something new for them. So why not maybe bring something which is different so what we did was we took stories the hindi stories of uh, the the course material from the course material of these schools and gave it to these katputli walas and through the medium of, of of the tools of the communication we were able to reach out to school and these katputli walas were actually taking the classes for these students and showing them the stories by, by the help of their katputli so I mean, what I'm trying to say that this project was thought, uh, one of our volunteers had thought of this project. Now, this is such a beautiful way of using media and communication to, to reach out to the students, to benefit the communities and its impact. So these people who were struggling to even get food in the, in the middle of the pandemic had enough money to, to sustain for the entire year after this project started. So that is one thing. The other thing that I'd like to point is, is, uh, is corporates and NGOs. So because I come from a sector which is the NGO sector, we all, I mean, living in the urban cities, we all talk about things around us. But at the same time, and this is also the case for the corporates, there are many corporates who are doing a lot of, a lot of projects, they're spending a lot of money. But what I end up asking them is that is it reaching the people i mean a lot of communication happens uh, on on the media be it newspapers be it uh, you know uh, the projects that, that the media that the uh, corporates are running online the point is that when we talk about awareness does the awareness actually reach the grassroots level it does not 
when people came out, a lot of films have come out. So people were talking and appreciating films like Batman and films like uh, Toilet Ek Prem Katha. Of course, I appreciate it. I appreciate that such kind of movies are coming. They're communicating to the audiences. But at the end of the day, who are the people watching the films? People like you and me, people who are living in the urban cities, people who have access to theaters and people who have money to go and watch a movie. People who are on the ground level who actually need to know this information are not getting this information because one, they do not care who Akshay Kumar is. They do not care what film is going on. They do not have enough money. He, he earns 100 rupees a day. He or she, they earn 100 rupees a day or even less or even more sometimes. But they do not want to go and watch a film. The awareness level in that community, in the grassroots level, has to reach through people like you and me or the organizations. So when NGOs, when uh, corporates are coming out with information, they need to make sure one, the information is absolutely correct and it is reaching to the grassroots level where it should reach. Because I'm assuming that people like you and me are aware about many things that, that we should be aware about. So I think the awareness point of view the communication really needs to uh, reach the bottom line of uh, the society to be able to upgrade it or to be able to help these, these communities. Absolutely. I think uh, there is a lot of merit in that. And also what a lot of times organizations end up doing in, in, in context of CSR is they usually fund things that they can see, touch and feel, which is very close to them. But the real grassroots reality is very drastically different from your urban settings. But um, having said that, Renuka, I'm going to ask you to step in here and talk talk about, uh, as we previously spoke of, how communications need not essentially be only meant for and tailored to social change, but how all communications can be conscious of ensuring that there is impact and change in everything that organizations say and do. Uh, so if you can weigh in on that and tell us a little bit about the campaigns that uh, you ran. Sure, sure. So, you know, in all these years, uh, it's a private joke, you know, all of us at marketing and communication, we call ourselves storytellers, you know, uh, that we are the ones who create the story. And uh, a good story is what sells and basis which people buy your products or services or whatever it is that you are selling to them. But a good story needs insights from people first. It, 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 it's not one way communication. First, you have to take in from people. What is it that our target audiences want to hear? While we do all that storytelling piece, very focused from a corporate point of view to sell our value proposition to our customers. At the same time, many uh, and so many times in our lives, we reach a crossroad where we realize as corporates that there is a huge responsibility to educate take a little bit of a thought leader thought leader stance and educate people on the go. And I'd like to maybe explain it via an example with my most recent uh, job uh, assignment uh, with Antara Senior Living. As a head of marketing and communication, um, when seven years ago, when we started, um, you know, our uh, whole marketing and communication campaigns, uh, a, the whole baggage of old age home and the Indian mindset of feeling very guilty to save for your retirement. Normally, Indians cut down as they are aging. So in the in the line of that uh, sort of uh, behavior of our target audiences, it was really tough to break through uh, to our customers. And we realized that in the process, we need to educate people how a good quality life. So we chose very consciously a brand language whereby we took social media, we took face-to-face, -to -face, all kinds of traditional, non-traditional ATL, BTL mediums to educate people on um, independent senior living, active aging. So the words that you choose, you help change mindsets. People who were against the thought of, oh, we can't put our parents in an old age home. It's not an old age home. It's a fun retirement community. So to be able to show all this, communication played a big, huge role, right? So we choose uh, sometimes to educate our customers on the way as we go along promoting our brands. And also we learn from them and educate ourselves. What are we missing here? 
you know and we realized that when we started doing research so many seniors there is so much abuse against seniors there is so yeah. much that could have been done so we used our existing customers who are well read well traveled to help so uh, uh, you know sort of sow the seeds of wellness into some new generation target audiences who then contribute to those seniors who are not so well off who can't take care of themselves whose kids for different reasons are not taking care of themselves so it kind of amalgamates into a social yet a a, a bigger larger cause you know right. the stigma has grown right. so infusing communication and social impact uh, change together somehow leads to these kind of results so one shall bring you in here and i'll uh, quickly ask you to share a couple more examples of what you've done in the last year that you've seen where you've married social impact and change with communications and actually have seen results that have positively impacted for social good actually so um, i think the first step of course is to create the right offering for the time so um, right. one of the work co work that we do in educus is teaching students how to communicate better so for that uh, the route that they typically prefer debating trainings or model united nations training is a very popular activity in the student yeah. community so we were actually able to take that online which was otherwise a barrier because they thought you can only learn this in person through activities but we had good trainers and what also happened with that is we had flexibility of time so we could create a cohort of 10 students as well as of 100 because of of the channel of communication and the quality delivered was equal so at the same time no flight cost no hotel cost no travel cost and it it made it more accessible so that was very exciting for us simultaneously with that on the mind low we have a big challenge that we're solving in this country which is the lack of career guidance i don't think people are thinking yeah. of career guidance they're thinking of doctors and cas and engineers and they're not always lucrative careers they're wonderfully lucrative careers with humanities so to be able to do that we thought let's start at the top and um, we have something called the international certified career coach it's an american mm -hmm. certification for uh, not only educators we even have people from google and other mncs that come and do this and what we did with this was that we took it online or created a digital platform and as opposed to certifying typically 100 counselors a month it during this pandemic we've already done about 14 and a half thousand now what's happened with that is that is where on the ground there has been a change in impact and i do take a few of these calls post the session and they've been from rural places in south india from sikkim from places otherwise we couldn't have access because we used to go to the eight biggest cities in india mm -hmm. so things like this and it was all about everything was done online like if you want more applications you increase the online spend it's just entirely reliant on how well you communicate the medium of communication that you uh, choose and, and most importantly clarity and i i think we've all seen uh, there has been a huge huge increase in the time we're all spending on our phones maybe just wasting time on instagram but that's where these ads are also coming in with good things and good courses that are eventually helping right thanks vanch uh, nandita vanch spoke about and also anurag and in some form renuka all of them spoke about various mechanisms of ensuring that the medium and the message are cracked well and then you take the final um, communications out there into the spaces that you want to i'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about measurement and how do you actually see through this entire mechanism because a lot of times people are really still understanding platforms everything is not not as hunky dory if you're working with limited resources and so how do you then plan manage and also sort of track your success in in context of communications uh, for social impact sure. i like to start uh, with an example uh, on this um, uh, you know uh, when it comes to uh, planning and everything uh, i think if we want true social change and transformation uh in terms of media we have to explore vernacular and regional media uh, a lot and what happens is that if we are sitting in uh, you know in metros uh, you know we are in our own little bubbles it is the mainstream media that we start focusing on and uh, <clears throat> we are not uh, you know uh, factoring in a lot of regional and vernacular media but to take that message to the last mile uh, you know to the to, uh, you know vernacular media regional media is is, is extremely essential Uh, the example that i was giving you that during covid when there was absolute lockdown and messaging on you know hygiene and how to prevent had to be uh, you know uh, sent across again to the most vulnerable and to the last mile 
it is through voice and video and you know an adaptable formats that you could take it through rural india right if you have audio can you play it in a loudspeaker you know if you have video can it run on very low bandwidth because you know uh, in terms of connectivity uh, so uh, and then you, if you're talking about measurement when you talk about measurement uh, we have to start using technology i think uh, there are a lot of apps uh, which a lot of non profits a lot of organizations uh, are using to monitor what is the messaging how, how much you know people are taking it in what is the response like and even in media but i, I would still say that um, uh, i would still say that i think measurement is something that all of us have not cracked we do have large numbers of digital engagement of we reach x number of people but i still am not very sure that you know how credible they are so that is my my opinion Right now, uh, I'm going to wind this up with a quick rapid fire. I didn't warn you about this before, but I'll start with Anurag and I'll come all the way around. Anurag, I'm going to quickly ask you to name three things uh, that organizations can do quickly, uh, which is social impact related for communication. I didn't get it. Three things that social impact organizations can do to have better communication. Well, communicate the right thing, the right right information. Because the law, I mean, can I explain also? Can I also say? No, no, just three words no? each. I think Kathy is back to remind us that the clock is ticking. So communicate the right thing. Reach out to the to the right community. Uh, reach out to the bottom line of the community, and make substantial use of the social media. Right, um, Renuka, tell us three things that organizations can do to ensure that even what they normally communicate can have some form of social change or impact. Um, authenticity in the communication, mean it, um, close the loop, listen to your customer, and last, um, just keep doing it. Uh, Vansh, what do you do with students and student communities? So three things that you can do to ensure that the future is in safe hands when it comes to the way things are communicated. Well, we um, don't want our communication lost, so we have those crazy, catchy taglines and creatives that are very important. Along with that, you you have to target the right right audience, and we time it well, considering there are very peculiar timings in the education space that you need to get right to be able to actually get them engaged. Awesome. And Nandita, lastly but not leastly, coming to you, can you tell us the three things that media can do to improve and ensure communications are actually getting access on both sides of the spectrum, both audiences and the people that want to send out these people? I think firstly, media needs to have you know, the right information. There's so much of disinformation also going on this. Uh, secondly, I think uh, it needs to be more creative as well, you know, in terms of storytelling, uh, more relatable. Uh, and uh, and uh, thirdly, uh, media needs to be more empathetic. I think media needs to be more empathetic, and not just you know. I would say uh, you know uh, when only an event happens, or so, there are certain issues which are there always, you know. But the media tries to highlight them only when there's you know. If you talk uh, talk about water, you know, there's a drought. Oh my God, we have a drought, and we forget about it. There are floods, we, you know, the floods, we forget about it. Climate change, oh, it's too hot. So it's more sustainable information on things that matter, and you know, uh, you know, keep going on it, and and spend and have those, uh, uh, you know, uh, journalists give them that space to, uh, you know, uh, do those stories. There are so many stories where journalists just don't get the space to do it. The media doesn't carry it. So the media needs to you know, back up on that definitely. Thank you so much. There you go, uh, Kathy. Back to you. Those, those were little snippets that I wanted to round up with. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for being a wonderful panel. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much.